Hello again everyone, thank you for joining us for another a round of Scottish Gin where we have been chatting to Scotland's gin makers and brands and other people in the in the wider kind of win, uh, win? gin um, scene. Um, so today we have Martin from Rock Rose Gin um, who are based up at Dunnet Bay. I'm very excited to catch up with them and, and um, I know they've just recently reopened their shop but it sounds like they're they're busy again so that's that's great to hear coming out of lockdown. So we'll, um, we'll bring Martin in on that note. Are you there? Hi, how are you Hi. doing guys? Good, how are you? I'm well, thanks. I'm not bad at all. Good, good. And um, yeah, so you, you mentioned just pre, pre-chat pre there that the shop is um, rammed by the... By the yeah. Screen. Obviously not, not one group at a time. <laughs> the queue is big, maybe, but the... It's controllably rammed. No, it's it, we've, we've got a system where allowing one bubble group in at a time. It's working really well. It means that people are not feeling rushed to get in the time. And then in between groups, we can like change things around so um it, it's been good the customer's been fantastic really receptive to it and it does mean we can't do tours at the moment um but claire's working on the next concept which will be early august okay brilliant yeah that's fantastic i guess that's really good to hear because you know we're all a bit like this is all brand new for everyone coming coming mm-hmm. out of lockdown and you, i guess you didn't know what to expect opening the shop again it's like are there going to be people but it sounds yeah. like um quite a few of have, have, have carried on with their holiday plans and made their and way north a really difficult decision for us we're two locals um built a business in our local village and um we really respect the kind of local sentiment and we wanted to make sure that what we did um was right for our staff for our customers and also for people from the local area so we are very careful to make sure that uh, we manage that and also that we review it on an ongoing basis and the staff know that if they're not comfortable with anything that we can change it and we can work something out but so far so good touch with that's good yeah, that's brilliant. great and um something one of the questions was actually martin said asked and i thought yeah i don't know the answer to this but so where does the name rock rose come from so it comes back from walks along the cliffs about seven years ago i was out with um a local herbalist a chap called brian lamb um, he's quite an eccentric um, guy. He's the UK's oldest established herbalist. Um, brilliant at what he does, absolutely fantastic. And because he knows what grows in the local area, I went for walks with him. We went around the river, in the forest, and then along the cliffs. And it was when we were along the cliffs that he introduced me to Rhodiola rosea. Um, it was a sedum that grows in the cracks of the cliffs. So if you imagine the north coast of Scotland, it's pretty cold, pretty wet, salty, windy, not a lot grows around there. But in this uh, sort of cliffs, you find these sedums. So Brian, being eccentric, um, got me to try the, the the sort of petals of the sedum. And they're really kind of waxy. They taste like cabbage, absolutely terrible for gin. <laughs> uh, he asked me then what I thought of it, and I was kind of sitting on the fence. I didn't want to offend him. I was like, oh, I'm really not to our taste profile. Trying to use a diplomatic way of getting out of using this thing. Um, but then he cut the root, and let me smell it and taste it, and it's really earthy Turkish delight rose. It's just fantastic. It's complete contrast to the leaf. So he called it a rose in the rocks, and that's where the name, I took that and put that into rock rose. Oh, very cool. Brilliant. Yeah, learned yeah. something there. That's... Never, never knew that. No, exactly. No, that's a great, that's a great story. And was that right at the beginning as you were developing your original recipe? Yeah, we worked with Brian and then a uh, countryside ranger, Mary Legg. And right at the start, we were looking to try and bring local flavours into our product, but also in a sustainable way so that, you know, we weren't going to um, use all of the berries from the forest and then there'd be none next year or do damage or affect birds. So, we were very careful to do all that consideration up front that we knew that it was long term sustainable, uh, but also that we get great flavours, great stories and something that we could talk about in our product. Yeah. Um, and that was a fun days, you know, making gin, uh, trying it, changing it and yeah, really get the chance to develop your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. And, and can you take us through some of your uh, Rock Rose gin expressions, Martin? Yeah, sure. So. Um, we started with our flagship, the original edition, Rock Rose, which um, it was always the gin that we wanted to create um, for ourselves. You know, we just, you hear that story from other distillers that they wanted to create a gin that worked for them. And that was our goal. And we also wanted to then have local flavours and local stories that we could talk about. 
Um, and that's always been our best seller. It's phenomenal. It's like 21 countries now, and it just wow. like blows my mind. Yeah. Um, but after that, we always wanted to challenge ourselves as distillers and also, again, try and develop more of a range. So uh, we started with Rock Rose. We then went on to Navy Strength, which was used more kind of juniper-led punch here for cocktails, um, but also it's just great on the rocks. Um, we then developed a seasonal range, which was really cool because at the time, I think some of the big guys had done one seasonal version, like a summer gin or summer cup, but nobody had done the full seasonal range. So we decided to do that. Um, we started off with a blank canvas where we wanted to try and take what we'd done with Rock Rose, recreate it, but take our customers on a journey around the gin wheels. So um, the spring edition, really difficult to get anything that goes up here in spring. We're just so exposed. Um, but we've got things like Colts Foot, we've got uh, Gorse um, and Dandelion, which creates a slightly floral, sweeter style gin. And then in the summer, again, setting ourselves a bit of a challenge, we wanted to make a citrus gin um, in the north of Scotland. Mm-hmm. And we used things like pineapple sage, lemon verbena, lemon balm, brilliant botanicals that we can grow here in our gardens and our geodome. And that gave us that citral, sorry, citrus herbal gin. Um, autumn, again, a slight challenge. We used berries and spice, but berries were easy to get up here. We had blackberries, raspberries, bellberries, but the spice was a challenge. So our gardener, Hannah, who's fantastic all of this, helped me come up with some ideas for what we could use as a spice botanical. So we've got nasturtium flowers that we pick that bring a little bit of pepperiness to the gin. And then we've got a uh, Vietnamese coriander that grows in our geodome and it's phenomenal, really, really nice peppery spice as well. It just adds a nice little bit of heat to complement the sweetness of the berries. Um, and then last but not least in our seasonal range is the winter edition. Um, it's, it's Christmas tree in a bottle, believe it or not. So one of the things we learned from our recipe development, our research, was that some of the chemical or flavour compounds that come from juniper are also present in trees. So the spruce tips that we use contain pinene and limonene, which is exactly what you find in juniper. So we're, we've done a juniper-led winter gin, but we've used spruce to give you that extra sort of taste profile of it being juniper-led. There's still a lot of juniper in there, but we wanted to have that little bit of fun and use these spruce tips. Now we pick them, we freeze them, and then we use them in our vapour basket. So that completes our seasonal additions. Um, and then we've got one more, which is our pink grapefruit old Tom. Um, it came about in a different way altogether from all of that. So they, those products were well thought out. They fitted with everything that we were doing um, as a brand. Um, and then the best one is a curveball. We did a uh, competition to do a design your own label. And Hope Lemire won that. Gosh, that was four years ago. And her prize was to win 12 bottles of gin. So we did the gin to her face profile, which was... Uh, slightly sweeter with uh, grapefruit as a predominant flavour. So we did effectively at the time a pink grapefruit old Tom, but without calling it that, we just called it the artist edition. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really popular. People loved it. We kept getting people asking for us to re-release it. So pink grapefruit old Tom is the artist edition re-released. So it's a nice story in there, but it's, it's a great, great kind of product to complete the set of what we do here. So you just did you just do initially like a one batch and sell it there at the shop, or was it out there commercially the 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 the, 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 the um, competition? One? It kind of all went off plan, you know. We uh, <laughs> the prize was for her to win twelve uh, bottles for her to use with her label on it. So we sent the bottles to Hope, and she opened them up on Facebook Live, and she had a big following as well. So then we kept getting people emailing us to say, "Can we buy this? Can we buy this?" And we're like, "Well." It's February, it's not a great time for a being a small gin distillery. So yeah, sure, let's try and figure it out. So we got labels printed and we put a batch online, I think it was early March. And the whole thing went in less than a week. It was just phenomenal. It was a, it was a beautiful label, lovely gin. And yeah, good to re-release it as a pink great for old Tom. Because that's, yeah. that's part of the permanent co- collection, isn't it? It's always available. Yeah. That's yeah. good, yeah. I, I love the fact that you know you and Claire and, and the team at Done It Bay, you've you've almost got all the the the, the flavors and, and and gin styles that a gin drinker should be looking for mm. and, and, and you know choice. seeking out, you mm. know, which I think is a fantastic you know thing to have for any for any gin brand. But, mm. but you, it's, it's, it's you know you've seen the distillery 
we're kind of we love playing with flavors we've got some great equipment but we've also got great people so we've got um hannah our gardener who can literally grow distill and we can taste um all on our own and then we've got kevin whose background was whiskey and so he understands aging of products we've, that's where the cask releases came from so we're lucky to have a good team but we also have that appetite we're really um, interested in flavor and we like to have a little bit of fun too yeah that was brilliant and and how has i mean we've obviously been up to see the distillery and done it being the local area and it, and it is an amazing part of scotland so we we know firsthand how beautiful it is and obviously how wild it probably is during winter but how how has the local area influenced you know the business the brand and the products i mean we love the local area so we moved home i moved from an oil and gas position and um, to move, build a house and move home to raise our kids here so we absolutely love Caithness so our business uh, was set up really kind of off record we were set up to be uh, uh, create two jobs one for me and one for Claire and that was what we were going to do and um, we had a business plan which was to do that to allow me to exit oil and gas but we love the local area so you see our products we have local botanicals we tell local stories We've built an attraction here for people to come and get to know us. So it's not a, a tour where uh, people come in and we tell them the kind of standard gin chat. We tell them all about us, about the local area, the stories that are really interesting. And um, we feel like we're ambassadors for the local area. Um, and we want people to come to find out about our distillery, but also to see the area around. We've got some great places to visit up here and, when the weather's nice, I think it's unbeatable. Yeah. I wish we'd had more time. We we did it in one day. It was like, <laughs> yeah, right. so we need to we need to like come back and 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 stay for a couple of days, maybe with the kids next time. But um, so you mentioned there about the um, you know, you're obviously still experimenting, and you've had like as well as a core, you know, you've had um, you know, your creative collection, and so you obviously still have the chance to experiment. Can you tell us a bit about you know how? how that process works when you're creating a new gin, how do you go about it? It's quite interesting. It, it, it comes about from different ways. So you've seen the seasonal editions were very planned out with what we wanted to do. Um, and then the creative collection came about because, um, like I say, we're a local company, but we want to use our business to be able to help other businesses. We had so many legs up at the start of people helping us along that we always had in the back of mind that we would use any success that we had to help other businesses. So the artist edition came about because we wanted to be able to help local artists. Um, and then the challenge was then to reflect their artwork into different gins, kind of like concept gins. Now they're not what we, we would always do as a core release, but it gave us a chance to again, learn new tricks, learn new sort of things in the gin distillation world. Um, and that's where that came from. So. We, Gin recipe development comes through different things. Um, Hannah will just see something growing and she'll distill it and then we'll taste it. And you know, our inspiration come, can come from something that um, we've had to eat, something that we've had to drink somewhere else, or just something that's growing locally. Um, and that's great fun. You know, that's such a kind of open way of looking at it. Um, the cask editions, for example, came about because Claire's two favourite kind of winter drinks are dessert wines like Sauternes, Duranson, and then she also likes a sherry as well. So I wanted to try the gin in those casks. So that came about because, well, Claire loves it. You know, we can, we can do it, we can try it. And if it doesn't work, we can have a fantastic staff night out. You know, it's <laughs> that way. Oh, yeah. but, but we're inspired by different ways. And um, we've got lots of old books, lots of new books, and they play into our thoughts quite a bit too. Yeah, no, that's great to hear because I suppose the more successful you become, it must be quite, you know, it, it, it must be finding the time to still be creative and still be, to still have that time to develop. You know, I imagine for a lot of brands that can become less and less, but it sounds like that's obviously still, and you've got a big team, you know, you've got, a, well, not a big team, yeah. team to support you, but it sounds like you still get lots of time to, to play. Yeah, we're lucky that we've got, like Hannah came in to help us part time gardening and then we quickly realised that she couldn't do a lot of gardening in January and February. <laughs> so I asked her if she wanted to help out with the recipe development and she loves that. So it kind of fits with us where we can use her. I can take an idea, she can develop it and yeah. we can, can, can do it together as a team. And I, I see that very much long term because we want to try new things, especially now I'm travelling a bit more with the business. So I'm 
ex being exposed to other ingredients, other flavors. I kind of inspired by that to come back and try things too. Fantastic. And you, yes, yeah, so you, you've been, um, you know, you, you mentioned you're traveling. What's some of the far flung places and most amazing bars you've, you've um, seen Rock Rose poured in? Uh, yeah, gosh, really just, it's, it's amazing when you go anywhere and you don't expect to see it and it just is there. That always really like, um, just makes me so happy. <laughs> when I've been traveling, there was one experience that was really great when I was in Bamboo Bar in um, Bangkok. So inside the Mandarin Oriental, really nice cocktail bar, went there with a distributor and he knew he played this a blinder. He said, we'll go in to talk to them about Rock Rose. And on their menu, they had, I think it was like seven or eight Scottish gins, and they had five of them were ours. And I remember sitting there thinking, this is insane, absolutely fantastic. And then uh, the other one, which you guys will know really well, is Atlas Bar Singapore. The place is unbelievable. And to go in there and you know that your gin's featured as gin of the month, they're doing a cocktail with Rock Rose, and it's just, you just, yeah, you can't believe it. It's just crazy. So you you actually because you went in and did some um, you know met Jesse didn't you and actually that yeah. would have been amazing just experience that's on our wish list for sure. Yeah, it was doing the staff training and I was like more in awe of them and they're trying to learn all about the brand and I'm just asking questions about what's that what's the oldest gen you've got all of these guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. fantastic! That's that's great. Brilliant. And and what are what would you say are some of your own proudest moments, Mark? Because there must there must be a number of milestones in, in the business and in, in your own personal gin journey that have stood out so what would you say are a few of your favorite standout moments oh great it's, it's really hard I, being proud is something that i don't ever kind of think about it like we once got a gin distillery of the year and that was amazing but i don't know we're we're, we're, we're just really kind of I, I wouldn't say we don't ever feel pride but we're kind of thinking of the next thing we're always just like that and you know I guess there's things that I treasure, which I guess is similar to being proud. Um, I think the day I left an offshore platform got my, you know, every, anyone in the industry will tell you that your flight home from the platform is the best feeling in the world. It's like 10 Fridays condensed into <laughs> one feeling. And I love that. But that last time when I knew I was kind of coming off the platform and I might not be going back, it was scary, but it was unbelievably great feeling. Um, and then, there was milestones along that that, again, was brilliant, you know, like not renewing my offshore survival, not doing a medical. All of those things were big things to think about, actually, um, as a family and not to do them. It made me feel like, like, like brilliant, absolutely amazing. So now the things that I really appreciate and treasure are things like I walk to work, I, I come along the beach, come to the distillery um, and I love it. And you just can't put a, a value on that feeling. And, before I used to be on a helicopter, I used to, have to travel down the night before, sometimes on a train, which would take seven hours. Um, now I can do that walk. And like, those are things that like, I just sit there and I think, brilliant, I absolutely love it. And then the travel, seeing Jen and all these other bars, they're all different sort of moments of pride where you, you just, or you're just amazed. You know, when I found out the Rock Rose was being sold in Hawaii, I was just like, this is just nuts. <laughs> That's what you've got to work a work a work trip in there somewhere, don't you? Yeah, Claire won't let me go until the kids are older and she can come with me. Absolutely, so, don't work. Yeah, trip to Hawaii is definitely on the list. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah. But, but I guess it's fantastic to hear that you know what what your business has done is also given you an opportunity to get these little moments back in life where you know you know the business is your baby, it's Claire's baby, it's what you're growing, it's something you're passionate about, it's something you love doing clearly which I think is something that you know it's certainly something we've realized mm. as we've got a bit older that you know th this time right now you can't get it back so you know you've got mm. to enjoy it and Especially make these when you're memories with, and, a, with a young family as yeah. well like to be around more and get that work-life balance is, yeah. is key isn't it yeah yeah absolutely and you know we probably take less holidays we probably work strange hours but we're there for the big moments I don't miss Christmas I don't miss birthdays so it, it's worth it to me and and um, like you say, they're young ones, they like you right now when they get a bit older, it's <laughs> more time to spend on the gym business when they're teenagers. Yeah. Than British. And, and the thing is, they'll probably be very popular when they're older and they're telling their, their, their new, you know, their, their new partners, well, my mum and dad have got a gym business. Yeah. Oh, no. We're going to be soft drinks by then. Yeah, okay, yeah, keep thinking. <laughs> 
And so out of all your gins, um, what's your personal favourite and how do you like to, you know, serve at home? I, I change year on year, believe it or not. Like I, especially the seasons, because we're harvesting ingredients at different times, the weather's the year's been different. I definitely within the seasonal range, I always pick a favourite. This year, Pink Grateful Tom has actually been my favourite. It's, um, it's just, we had such good weather in April and May, and it felt like a really summery drink. And normally, Old Tom we can have now July August, but because we were able to enjoy it in the sunshine in April and May, it became my favourite of this year. We just felt like we were having a nice long summer, and then July came and we've had no summer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll come back at some point, but you never you never know. And would you? So would you make that with a cocktail? Would you make that? Would you just drink that with tonic? You know how? Yeah, I'm a gin and tonic drinker, so I um, would would be just with tonic and uh, pink grapefruit peel. We've got an abundance of pink grapefruit peel because all our team here peel them for the old tom. So normally got leftover peel that we can freeze and use for our garnishes. So yeah, it, it's it's been my favourite um, this year for sure. And um, in the past, navy strength's been my one. I think I talked to Martin about a Negroni, but a Negroni with navy strength is just fantastic. But just have one. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've, we've, we've got bottles sitting, do we? Yeah, absolutely. Recently bought, but no, the the pink grapefruit old tom that we had didn't hang around long either. No. So, <laughs> um, I guess the thing the thing I liked about it was it still had that subtle notes of sweetness and subtle grapefruit, but it wasn't a super sugary. You know, it tasted like, like yeah. braided with a bit of skill, and it you know it wasn't just artificial. It, you could taste the the flavors in it. You know. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, we spent a lot of time doing that. We we bought lots of different grapefruits, um, different from different places. We tried all of them. We tried tried the grapefruit distilled hot, distilled cold. We tried it with different types of sugar. So you've got muscovado sugar in there, which the muscovado sugar really draws out more of the grapefruit flavour. It's not there because it 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 brings a little bit of treacleness to the gin, but it's actually more more there to bring out the grapefruit flavour, which it it does and in blind tasting we couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh. Oh, no, I'll let you go. <laughs> and what are some of the positives you've taken out of a lockdown situation then? Um, a time to reflect. You know, we've been running around for six years. We we do take time in January to reflect, but now this year it's been a lot more kind of deeper, a lot more chance for me to go and research um, and understand how we want to shape the business and take it forward. There's a lot of things that we've done with the business that, um, we don't shout about really proud of things like solar panels. We're now generating more electricity than we're using. These sorts of things that um, we've done because the environmental side of it was very important to us. But we want to develop that and shape that and also just try and imagine what the business looks like in five years' time, which if you'd asked me five years ago to do that, I just couldn't do it. But now I can think about how it's going to look in five years' time and how I want it to look. So it feels like we've got a bit more of... A chance to steer the business to control the business and that's been good um and it's also been a, a, a lockdown has been good for us because we've been able to really kind of understand how we can develop different channels of the business as well so we've seen sales in some and not in the others and identify things that we should do better things that we don't at the moment so chance to reflect improve also um plan as well yeah, no, the slowdown, I think that's a theme we've seen coming through. It's, yeah, it just gives, yeah. it's a, uh, pr provided that period of reflection. So, um, yeah. And I think I think a lot of businesses as well have had to take whatever their strategy was for 2020, 2021 <laughs> and kind of throw it out the window yeah. as well. So, uh, <laughs> the first time we've had a plan and I had to riff it up. You know, we've had plans before, but they've always been quite loose. This time we had a firm plan and it was like, you know, it's just gone. February and it's done. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously we, we touched on it briefly that, you know your your visitors' experience, and the, well, the shop is now reopen. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what people visiting the distillery and shop once everything's kind of back to normal, what they can expect uh, with a visit to Dunnet Bay Distillery? So the shop we have um, Libby, Laura, and Joanne uh, in the moment looking after people. So we're going out and we're making sure that people get a chance to look around the garden. So if there is a wait outside, it's not. You're not sat waiting, you're out having a look around the gardens, getting a talk from one of our tour guides who aren't doing tours. Um, and then you're getting a, an experience when you come into the shop, you're still getting um, a lot of good um, insight from our team. Claire's working on a project at the moment, so we've got a tasting room at the back of the shop. Um, Claire, we weren't sure what to do with tours. We, we 
couldn't really do it with space we had to take people into production. So um, we decided not to do tours. But then it gave us a, a problem that we felt that people who'd come all the way to the north of Scotland wasn't going to get an experience from our business. So um, we just went and kind of ripped up everything we thought about as being a traditional tour. And it's all gone and they're building stuff, they're painting stuff. It's just, it's, it's really exciting. And what it does do is it gives us a chance to um, wow our customers when they come. Um, I give them a kind of Highland welcome. It's really difficult times just now. So we want to try and give people that welcome still, even though they can't do a tour. Um, and it also gives us something to chat about. So hopefully once it's all done and we can send you the photos, it'll be of interest to, the, to, to all the people that follow you guys. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, oh, we, look, we look forward to hearing more about that. That sounds exciting. Well, you're not you're not sitting still anyway. That's yeah. that's that's good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's all the questions we had for you, Martin. That went really fast. That was um, that was really good, and um, we certainly learned a, a few new yeah. things there. So that was uh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Great uh, as always. Not, not at all. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Good luck with everything, and um, yeah, we'll we'll talk to you soon. I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll also keep an eye out uh, on your social media channels to see this uh, the, the unveiling of what your new year is going to be. <laughs> yeah, so, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure now for clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thanks again for everything, Martin. You guys take care and keep up the good work, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Uh that's great. Thank you very much to Martin for joining us. Um, sounds like they've got some really exciting plans afoot. So um, yeah, we'll we'll wait and see what that brings. Yeah. But glad to hear that the um, you know the shop is is really busy and the and the and obviously um, the visitors are back to the Highlands for sure. Um, so and obviously they're all trying to be responsible and behaving and uh, yeah. Martin said, you know, it's just getting that balance. You know, you don't want to, you know, it's mixed feelings, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And you yes. want to, you want to make sure you're being sensible for the for the locals, but you need people are there to experience. So, um, but uh, yeah, that. Uh, that's just a lovely part of the country. You can't go much further north. Well, you can. That is literally the, the next stop's Orkney. Exactly, it's the UK's most northerly um, distillery, mainland isn't it? Distillery. Mainland distillery. Yeah. Uh, yeah mainland. Yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, beautiful part of the world if you can ever make it there. But thank you for tuning in again. Um, we will keep you updated with who we're chatting to next. So keep an eye on social media. Take care. Thanks, Stay guys. Safe. All the best.